Hi everyone, another week has gone by so fast and we're back together again today for another talk and another craft. So this week on Wednesday, it's Remembrance Day. And Remembrance Day is a day where we honor and remember the soldiers, the nurses, pilots, medics, and everyone else that served in World War I. World War I started on July 28th in 1914 and didn't end until November 11th in 1918. That's why Remembrance Day is on November 11th, because that's the day that the war ended over 100 years ago. Canada's first Remembrance Day service was on November 11th in 1919, the, a year after World War I ended. On Remembrance Day at 11 a.m., people all across the country stand for a two-minute moment of silence, and we listen to somebody play The Last Post and The Reveille on a trumpet. Usually at church this week, we do a Remembrance Day service in person, and we'd listen to Andrew play it on his trumpet. All over the country on November 11th, services happen, and you might have gone to one of these services at school. Maybe you saw a wreath laid, poems read, or maybe a veteran even speak. I know that sometimes people will come to our school and we get to listen to them speak and tell us about their experiences. Now, there's a person that's very important in Canadian history, and he actually grew up not too far from here in Guelph. This person is named John McRae, and he was a medical officer in the war. He wrote the poem in Flanders Fields, which you've probably heard before, and I'll read it in a minute for you. So John McRae wrote this poem during a battle called the Battle of Ypres, or Eeps, in Belgium. He worked in a field hospital that was right on the front lines of the war, and he wrote this poem after one of his friends died in the war. He wrote the poem, and he talks about the poppies that grew across Flanders, and the wooden cross that marks his friends and all the other fallen soldiers' graves. In Flanders Fields is a poem that expresses and talks about hope and strength and beauty that you can find even during the hardest times, like in war. And this is why we wear a poppy over our hearts, like I have my poppy on here. This is why we wear this poppy over our hearts during November. It's a way to symbolize the war and honor those who fought for Canada and those who are still in the armed forces in Canada. This past summer, I got to go to Europe with my family and my dad and my brother actually got to go see some of the battlegrounds of World War I. And they got a chance to visit Ypres and they saw the field hospital that John McRae served in and a memorial that was put there to honor him. And here are a few pictures of these that they took. And I'm going to read you guys a short book now that's called A Poppy is to Remember. And in this book, you're going to hear John McRae's poem. A Poppy is to Remember. Once there was a long and terrible war, a war some called the Great War. Many young men went off to fight, and many did not return home to their families. But still, in the muddy fields where they fought, wild poppies sprang up, glowing brightly. An army doctor, weary from tending the wounded, wrote a poem about that war and about those poppies. It's called In Flanders Fields. In Flanders Fields, the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place and in the sky the larks, still bravely singing, fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you, from flailing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep though poppies grow in Flanders fields. His poem was read far and wide when the war finally ended on November 11th, 1918. People everywhere celebrated the return to peace. A poppy is to remember those far from home crossing troubled lands and threatening waters and dangerous skies. It is for the wounded and those who cared for them. It is for the dead and those who carried on without them. 
It is for the brave ones who remain in their memories of battle. A poppy is for peace. Every day on Remembrance Day, it blooms across our land. A poppy is to remember. Thank you guys so much for listening. And now we're going to go on to our craft for today. So for your craft today, you're going to need to grab your November 8th bag that says Remembrance Day Craft. And also your glue from, your, from the bottom of your big bag with everything in it. In this bag, in the, the Remembrance Day craft bag, you're going to find a pot with a baggie of dirt in it and also two popsicle sticks. Um, you're gonna find paintbrushes. I had two, I don't know if you'll have two or one. I don't actually know why there's two, but there, there's paintbrushes. Um, white paint. And also you're gonna find this little baggie. Make sure that you find it in the bottom. It might be camouflaged or a little bit hidden. Um, but these seeds are actually poppy seeds that my dad got when he visited Ypres. And that's why we're going to be planting these today to honor all the soldiers and remember the war. So for this craft today, we're going to be painting a little bit. So it might get a little bit messy. So the first thing that I want you to do is find some newspaper or other paper that you can put on your table just to cover your surface so you don't get paint everywhere. Um, and then we'll meet back here in a second when I get mine. Okay, I'm back. I have my newspaper and I also have, well, this is actually the top of a margarine container, um, but I have this that I can put my paint on it. So the first step is to grab your, where did my, I put my newspaper on my popsicle sticks. So the first thing you want to do is grab your popsicle sticks and put them down on your newspaper. I don't have anyone to record me today, so this is what you're going to want to do with your popsicle sticks. Just put them down on your newspaper and then grab your white glue, shake it up a little bit, open the lid, and just put a little bit on whatever surface you have. So I'm obviously putting it on my margarine lid, but you might have um, something else. So then with your paintbrush, and this is where it gets a little bit messy. This is why we have the newspaper. You're gonna dip your paintbrush into your paint, just like that. You're just gonna begin to paint your popsicle sticks white, completely white on every side. So what you might wanna do is paint one side, wait for it to dry while you paint the other one and then do the other side. Um, you might get some paint on your hands. That's okay. It'll wash off. You just need to wash your hands after. So I'm just painting it just like that. Now I'm getting to the end of my popsicle stick, so I'm going to need to put it down now because my hands are where I need to paint. So while I'm waiting for these to dry, we're going to move on to the next part of our craft before we can paint the other side of these. We are going to grab our pot and our dirt. So... Now, this part is also going to get a little bit messy, and you might need your parents to help you just so that you don't get dirt everywhere. It'll be really embarrassing now if I get dirt everywhere. So you have to be really careful and just pour your dirt right from your bag into your pot. We tried to add the exact right amount of dirt into everyone, so hopefully it's pretty pretty even. So now once you have your pot filled with dirt, we're just going to wait for our popsicle sticks to dry and then we'll go on to the next step. Hello, welcome back. My popsicle sticks are now dry and I am now in a new location because my laptop was dying. So next step, so we're going to paint the other side of our popsicle sticks. So as you can see, that's my first side. And now we're going to need to paint the back. So you can either hold it like I'm doing or put it down on your um, newspaper and paint the other side. I'm just going to start painting just like this, just like you did with the other side. Okay, now that I'm done painting the other side of my popsicle sticks, 
The next step is that we're all gonna go and wash our hands. Cause as you can see, I have paint all over my fingers and also dirt on my fingers. So while we wait for these to dry, we're gonna go wash our hands, clean up a little, and then we're gonna finish our craft. Be right back. I just realized that when I walked over there to get a paper towel before, I lost my poppy. So don't worry, it's back now. <laughs> Hello, I'm back and my popsicle sticks are dry. Here's my first one and here's my second one. So the next step is to grab your glue, open it up. And what we're going to be doing with these two popsicle sticks is making a cross. So we're going to put it like that because this is, um, as a cross was used um, at the graves of each of the soldiers in World War I. So, right in the middle of your smaller popsicle stick, you're just going to add a little, little tiny dab of glue. It's about that much, just a tiny little bit. And you're going to attach it to the back of your second popsicle stick just like that just like that and then just hold them together squeeze them together and then wait for them to dry just like that okay now that your cross is dried we're going to place this in the back of our pot just like that it's in the back so now we're going to add our poppies into the dirt so just with your pinky finger, just poke a few holes just all around in front of your cross that you're going to dump some of your poppy seeds in. So be super careful because the poppy seeds in here are really, really tiny. So you're just going to open up your bag. I'm getting all of them onto, into the bottom in one corner. Just gonna open the bag a tiny bit. Make sure not to spill them. I'm just going to dump a few into each of the holes. Maybe you might find it easier to put it on your hand first and then put it in. I find it easier to just go right from the bag and dump it in, but that's up to you. Now that all of my poppy seeds are out of my bag, I'm just going to move the dirt and just cover them up. And now this is the most important step but you're gonna bring this over to your sink with your parents and just add a little bit of water and then put it near a window that gets some light so the light shines and then your poppies will start to grow. You're gonna keep this pot inside throughout the entire winter. And when you're ready to put it outside in the spring, when the ground thaws, it's not frozen, it's not cold anymore, these pots are actually biodegradable. So you can plant the pot right in your garden and then it'll just keep growing. So I'm gonna go have add some water to mine but I hope you guys enjoyed the craft in the story today and I hope you have a great week and I'll see you next week bye